Hi, my name is Alessandro Zocchi and in this video we are going to talk about a special aspect of our brain's functioning regarding learning. More specifically, we are going to talk about the so-called Dunning-Kruger effect and how it can affect our way of believing in what we know and how it relates to metacognition. The Dunning-Kruger effect is a cognitive bias, that is a misdirected way of thinking and reasoning uh, that can often lead us to wrong conclusions. However, in order to explain better the idea behind it, I'd like to show you one of the many results of the experiments performed by professors Dunning and Kruger in order to explain and describe more scientifically this phenomenon. In this experiment, the two American psychologists asked a group of people to do an, a test on English grammar. After handing in the assignment, the researchers asked people how, in their opinion, did on the test, what was the mark they took, and more in general, what was the level of knowledge of that subject. After collecting all the information they, and correcting the assignments, they um, plotted the data on this graph we, we can see here, gathering the information in four groups according to uh, the participants' uh, real and perceived performance. We can see here at the bottom the four groups, and we can see here the line uh, related to the actual test score. So we have a first group of people who performed uh, quite badly in the test. They did not answer correctly to most of the questions. Then we have a second group that did a little better, a third group that went even uh, better, and the last group that we can consider the group of the experts as they uh, answered uh, correctly to most, if not all, of the questions. But let's see what happened to their perceived ability and the perceived test score. The first group, the one that performed quite badly, quite overestimated themselves. They thought that their level of knowledge on that subject was much higher and that they um, had a much higher mark on the test. A second group, again, they overestimated quite a lot themselves. A third group, this one was the, the only one who actually matched their perceived abilities uh, with the real uh, score. And then uh, look what happened to the group of the experts. They actually underestimated themselves. Despite a real uh, um, expertise on the subject, they thought they did not perform well in the, in the test and that their general level of knowledge was nothing more than the average one. According to the authors, the conclusion of this experiment was simply that the less we know about the topic, the more we believe we are expert in it. When we know little, we don't know what we don't know, and actually we believe uh, we know all there is to know, and therefore we will automatically feel experts. However, according to the real experts, this is a completely natural phenomenon, is a part of how our brain works, probably they had an evolutionary advantage, and it can affect us uh, in any moment, with any topic, at any age, and whatever cultural level we have. However, uh, knowing its existence is particularly important in order to try to avoid it or counteract it whenever we need to. Overcoming this natural tendency described by the Dunning-Kruger effect requires great work, great effort, even an increased energy consumption uh, from the more uh, frontal parts of the brain, those uh, that underlie the human cognitive functions. This is actually something that the brain is not always willing to do, as it knows, so to speak, that energy is important for the survival of the individual. But this is the only way we have to go through if we really want to learn deeply and become experts. Well then, uh, well, how can we try to fight the Dunning-Kruger effect and uh, be sure that we are on the right path? Experts suggest that metacognitive questions can help a lot. 
Dunning and Kruger themselves uh, tried to modify the perception of knowledge of their uh, experimental students uh, by giving them a list of questions uh, to reflect upon. As you know, metacognition is that process of thinking about thinking and reflecting on how we acquire and elaborate information. As easy as it might seem, it's not something that we often do about ourselves and it's not usually taught in school, despite the fact that it's been proven to be a crucial step in our learning processes. In this slide, you can see three basic but extremely important metacognitive questions, but you can find a list of many more in a document as additional material in this course. The first question here asks, did we practice enough with the material? This concept implies that uh, we have to know how long did we spend uh, our time with the material we have to study. Did we actually uh, learn, repeat, tested ourselves and practice in some way with the concepts that we had to learn? If we didn't do it enough, uh, probably we were not able to deep learning that material. The second question says, did we have proper feedback? Whatever material we have to study and uh, whatever strategy we are used to, to apply, we need a proper feedback, either positive or negative, from uh, some kind of process or someone else. Without a proper feedback, we will never be able to be sure that we are on the right path, that we are actually learning and comprehending properly. The third one says that we frequently challenge our knowledge with some problem solving. This is an interesting po point because it says um, that we uh, continuously have to um, challenge our knowledge, uh, testing ourselves uh, and probably making... Uh, uh, trying to solve uh, some problems, uh, always uh, some new problems, uh, maybe with some new material that even we um, haven't studied before. This will consolidate what we already learned uh, and will prepare our mind to acquire also the new material. Now, try to answer uh, uh, some questions like these it will lead us to become more aware of what we actually did to learn and makes us understand what we should do to become more knowledgeable if we answer negatively to some of these questions. The most important message here is that thinking about what we are learning is obviously important, but even more so is how we are learning. As we said earlier, Dunning and Kruger gave some questions like these to their students and afterwards they were tested again and asked to self-evaluate their performance. This time, the participants had a more realistic perception of their knowledge. Both the unskilled and the experts estimated their assignment outcome much closer to their real test score. There is also another very simple way to try to estimate our knowledge and relating it to the perception we have of it. If we are teachers, we can definitely and fruitfully use it with our students. In this slide, you see a very particular graph where the number of real correct answers expressed here are associated with the estimated number of correct answers given by the students immediately after a test. So each blue dot refers to a student with his, her estimated and real scores. The students who are below the red line will be students who overestimate themselves precisely because their estimated score is higher than the real one. The students who are above the red, uh, the red line will underestimate themselves, as their real score is always higher than the estimated one. Who is found along exactly the red diagonal will have a good, let's say, uh, metacognitive skill, as they seem to evaluate very well their knowledge, be it good, like in this case, or bad, like in this case. This test can be applied very easily, also because we can use some softwares that can build a graph automatically, and we can show it uh, in the classroom uh, immediately after the test. Google Form is one example. 
Uh, when they are used frequently during formative assessment, for example, they will help students to develop self-evaluation and look for adjustments in their learning strategies. In conclusion, developing metacognitive skills is fundamental for our learning abilities and our work as teachers. Becoming more aware and careful in considering the amount of time spent studying, uh, testing and uh, getting uh, rapid and unequivocal feedback will make us better judges for our and others' expertise. Well, that's it for this video. I hope it's been interesting and I'll see you next time.